my guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful, <coughs> actually feeling almost like a Florida winter day here on this Monday morning, January 29th, 2024, so someone I mean, you might be aware there are rumors out there that I am uh, quickly uh, spiraling down into the darkest depression I have been in in, oh, four and a half years, maybe. Uh, so, it is a good thing it is a Monday morning in my depressed, collapsitary in life because it is time for our Good News Monday Roundup on Collapse Chronicles, where I scour the mainstream media for some good news, because I do need some cheering up today as my life just uh, spirals down into a, a black hole. But I actually want to thank Sancho Panza, Sancho Panza coming up with this first story that he wants to, that he is cheering on and uh, celebrating uh, and he wanted me to share this piece of good news with the rest of you and I do agree with Sancho. We're going to go over to, uh, to England for this news report about these things are called XL bully dogs, extra large bully dogs. What they are, these dogs, if you want to call them dogs, I would basically call them beasts, are th these just like supersized pit bulls. They are the, the dog from hell that uh, maim and kill, no telling uh, how many hundreds if not thousands of little dogs like Sancho, not to mention a few old ladies and children along the way, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, we have some good news from, uh, from uh, Zombie Island, XL Bully Dog thrown to its death from bridge. All right, the highest and best use of one of these goddamn things. A muzzled XL bully was believed to have been alive when it was thrown off a bridge in South Yorkshire. <clears throat> the body of the black and white dog was found by a dog walker uh, in the area known as the Washlands. Uh, yeah, the dog was microchipped to a breeder, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> the XL Bully's suspicious death comes just days before a ban on owning XL bullies comes into force in weeks after the government introduced legislation requiring them to be muzzled and kept on a lead in a public place. Um, the new rules on XL bullies came into force on New Year's Eve, meaning it is now illegal. This is in England, not in the U.S., unfortunately. In England, it is now illegal to breed, sell, advertise, exchange, gift, rehome, abandon, or allow the animals to go stray in England and Wales. Um, existing owners of the breed are allowed to keep their pets, but there are a raft of measures that they will have to adhere to. And owners were advised to stop breeding the dogs ahead of the ban while the government also recommended animals be trained to wear a muzzle. Uh, it is expected that all owners, it will be expected, yeah right, 
that all owners register their XL bullies on the index of exempted dogs by February 1st and it will be illegal to own one that is not on the index. The dogs also must be microchipped and neutered. Hallelujah. XL bully owners who fail to register their dogs face a criminal record and an unlimited fine. Their dog could also be seized. Owners also have the option to have their dogs put down by the vet. And I would uh, share the comment that Sancho Panza left at the end of the article. Uh, but the Yahoo News community ripped down Sancho Panza's uh, comment about that article on those on those goddamn vicious killers, which need a, a, every goddamn XL bully, pit bull, all, all the rest of them need to be obliterated off the face of this planet. Uh, but unfortunately, Sancho Panza's comments uh, celebrating this news were ripped down for violating the Yahoo community's guidelines. Sorry, Sancho, you know what it feels like. So this one actually is some straight ahead. The, the, you know, every once in a while, there, there is just some straight ahead, unvarnished good news showing up. Uh, thank you. The largest dam removal in U.S. history has begun. The largest dam removal removable the largest dam removal project in American history took an irreversible step forward earlier this month when crews opened a 16 foot wide tunnel in the base of the Iron Gate Dam in Hornbrook, California. The event marked the beginning of the end of a decades-long effort to restore the Klamath River, which snakes for more than 250 miles through Oregon and California to a new, meaning old, natural state. This is, uh, this is a noble savage Amy Cordalis a member of the Yurok tribe. Quote, This is historic and life-changing, and it means that the Yurok people have a future. It means the river has a future. The salmon have a future. Well, you know, uh, that might be true for uh, a few more years. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, d despite the fact that it doesn't mean any of those things, uh, it is still, you, you know, every year that uh, the salmon, uh, it, I guess, is good news. But of course, the salmon are going down the toilet like the Yurok people and everybody else. But really, the main story I'm here to talk about uh, is one of my, you know, one of, I could probably list on one hand my, my slivers of hopium that I still cling to. And uh, one of the few, uh, and I'm sure this is just another Doomer pipe dream, is Arctic zombie viruses. Arctic zombie viruses are one of our, you know, antibiotic resistant microbes is, is one. And uh, Arctic zombie viruses are certainly a, uh, a little sliver of hopium to cling to as everything goes to hell in a handbasket. 
Arctic zombie viruses could be released by climate change from thawing permafrost. Scientists claim, we've been hearing this for years, this is I guess just the latest update on this. Um, some, some scientists are warning of the potential for Arctic zombie viruses in Siberia, according to reports. The claim is that as climate change causes the Arctic permafrost to thaw, it will release ancient viruses that could put humans at risk of disease. There you go. National Geographic hilariously still defines permafrost as, quote, a permanently frozen layer below Earth's surface, um, blah, blah, blah. Well, of course, it's, uh, I call it tempafrost. I think, Sandy, what do you call it? Permamush? Permamush or tempafrost. Uh, so what's uh, going on? This is Jean-Michael Clavier, PhD, a geneticist and an emeritus professor at the School of Medicine at some university in South France, I cannot pronounce, has co conducted extensive research on Arctic zombie viruses also referred to as Methuselah microbes. There you go. Um, in 2015, a research team unearthed several viruses from the permafrost which were estimated to be 30,000 years old. Um, as Clavier wrote, in an article published by Think Global Health on January 18th, uh, quoting Dr. Clavere, quote, it is now clear, it is now clear that a significant proportion of prehistoric viruses can remain infection for even longer periods of time Close quote. After being stable for the last 400,000 years, the Siberian permafrost could now become threatened due to global warming, according to the researcher. Quote, thawing increases the release and revival of permafrost microbes, including ancient ones from the late Pleistocene, i.e. the last 100,000 years, our species, hence our immune system, has never been in contact with most of those microbes during its evolution. Hallelujah, so maybe my, uh, my prediction that has not changed one iota that the uh, corona panic, yeah, right, the, that the corona panic will end up looking like a bad hair day uh, as this planet continues to collapse as finally Finally, some sort of virus is, is unleashed on this planet that needs to do what needs to be done, and that is getting rid of the number one virus on the planet, which is humans. Uh, we can kiss goodbye that little corona pussy 0.2% uh, death rate and, uh, and, and get these checks and balances uh, going. Uh, previous research has also identified many different types of bacteria uh, in permafrost that are linked to some common human pathogens. Uh, 
you know, those not talking viruses now, talking uh, bacteria that are thawing out. Uh, well, there's anthrax, brucella, clostridia, mycoplasma, uh, streptococci, staphylococci, rickettsia. All right, all kinds of stuff uh, bubbling up there. Um, <clears throat> Claver, well, Claver said we can reasonably believe that modern antibiotics could still control many of these older pathogenic bacteria. He said the situation would be, quote, much more disastrous in the case of an ancient or unknown, unknown virus being least released from permafrost and causing human or animal uh, diseases. And of course, this is where, uh, you, you know, every, uh, every bright cloud has a dark uh, stormy lining. And that is, uh, of, of course, that all of these viruses that uh, can take out humans uh, will also be affecting our fellow earthlings. Uh, and that, of course, is uh, why you, you, you know you can't have any hope on this planet. Um, yep. See, this is, uh, they, they interviewed some other virologists. Uh, here's Marion Koopman, uh, some virologists. Uh, the potential is there. You then would have to assume that viruses that may be able to infect humans or wild animals also could be present and at some point be released. So, you know, it is a double-edged sword. Uh, Well, I guess here's Edward Liu, M.G., Chief M.D., Chief of Infectious Diseases, blah, blah, blah. Uh, acknowledged that permafrost viruses are a, quote, valid concern if long disappeared viruses start circulating in a naive population. I like that term, a naive population. Uh, and then of course, uh, you know, looking at, it's not just the permafrost, we could finally get one of these zoonotic uh, viruses as humans continue to uh, obliterate uh, every corner of habitat on the planet as we move deeper and deeper uh, into the last few untouched corners of the planet that we haven't already destroyed. Maybe, just maybe, uh, we'll stumble uh, onto some unknown virus uh, that'll kill us all. Other potential sources of new viruses include bush meat, or, as we just said, or just human civilization pushing into wildlife areas. In each case, a virus enters a naive population, so we have no herd immunity to slow it down, he said. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, 
And this goes on and on. Uh, all right. Good Lord, this is a uh, a a a book here. Uh, anyway, here's Dr. Christian Sandrock, UC Davis Medical Center, quote, as climate change and other human-related issues occur, we are always exposed to new things. This has been happening for a long time. The real issue arises if these microbes could then become transmissible to humans and cause sustained transmission that can lead to a pandem pandemic. Uh, we need to have sustained transmission for it to be really concerning. Close quote. And we're going to close uh, with a quote from Dr. Mark Siegel clinical professor of medicine at NYU. Uh, quote, the virus, they meaning the viruses, would likely have to go through many changes to adapt to or spread among modern hosts. Much more concerning is the close contact with animals and humans in Asia, which can and does lead to zoonotic spillover to humans, close quote. So uh, there's still a chance we can get one of these viruses doing its job. But anyway, I have a little bit of hopium to cling to uh, as I have pretty much lost my last shred of false hope that was obliterated by the mushroom god uh, it destroyed my last shred of hope I had on the planet so uh, I guess I'll have to cling to uh, new pandemic viruses uh, actually uh, getting out there and doing what viruses do uh, but with that, good news roundup. Uh, I guess the little dog and I have to uh, head up to the liquor store to replenish my tequila stocks so I can enjoy my sundown margarita over the end times. While I still can, my guys.